Android 6.0, also known as Marshmallow, has a new permissions model that streamlines the app install and auto-update process. This new model gives your users great flexibility, but you need to make sure that your app behaves as expected when they allow or deny specific permissions. Hi, I'm Lawrence Moroni, and I'm here today to take you through the steps that will ensure your apps give your users the best possible experience in Marshmallow. Step 1. Set your API level and target SDK to at least version 23. You can see them in your Gradle code here. Also, make sure that you're using the v4 support library to verify and request permissions. Add it to your Gradle file if you don't already have it. Step 2. Go back to your code. When you connect to Google Play services, you first connect to a Google API client. It's a common step that you may have seen a hundred times before, but before you skip over this, it's extremely important to set your code to handle Google API client connection failures gracefully using the proper resolution process. For details and code samples, take a look at the link here. Step 3. At this point, you've likely connected to Google Play services, and it's easy to assume that once you've done this, that you can just go ahead and call the APIs. Well, that's mostly true. Prior to Marshmallow, users had to agree to your permissions before installing. So by the time your code was running, you could assume that you had the permissions to do what you needed to do. In the new model, that's not necessarily the case. Before calling any of the APIs that require permissions, you need to check that you have those permissions every single time, because users may have changed the privileges granted to your app, and you may need to re-request the permissions again. You do this by calling the check self permission method on the activity compat fragment or context compat. You can see it here. If this call returns false, then the requested permission is no longer available. It might have been previously, but it isn't now, so don't call the API. The good news is there's this request permissions method that you can use to inform your user that you need those permissions and that they can choose to grant them. In the previous step, you requested the permission again, and the system will call you back with an on request permissions result function. So step four is to implement this callback function. The callback gives you a request code parameter, which you can check against the particular API call types that you want to access. And if it gives you the go ahead by passing the permission granted constant, then you can safely call the API knowing that it's permitted. Step five. If your user has explicitly denied a permission to your app, but your app needs that permission to continue, you will need to manage their expectations and help them understand what your app needs for that specific permission to function. You can do this with the should show request permissions rationale method on an activity fragment or context. So for example, here you can see that a permission has been granted for fine location. So a UI can be generated to tell the user that. What this UI is is up to you. It can be as simple as a toast notification or an entirely new activity. It's entirely up to you. From there, you can go into the user flow to request permissions again, but be sure to be respectful and clear in the message that you give. And that's it. Android Marshmallow is the latest, greatest version of this mobile operating system. And while the permissions model has changed quite a bit, it's pretty straightforward to get your apps ready to use it. By allowing users to choose their permissions when they're relevant and in context, instead of being overwhelmed when they first install the app, their experience with your app will be much better. We have some great samples that you can look at and to see how to handle user permissions in Marshmallow. Thank you. I'm Lawrence Moroni, and you're going to go build better apps.